Hi, it's me, JD, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I will be showing you 10 easy ways to add foil to your projects. Before we begin, be sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll jump right in. The first method is one of the easiest methods. It's by using double-sided adhesive. First, I'm going to do some hand lettering for my sentiment. And for this, you're going to need a really strong double-sided adhesive as well as some pretty foil. I'm using some deco foil today for all my foiling projects. And the first couple of methods I'm going to show you is without a laminator, and the ones at the end are going to be with a laminator. So for this first method, like I said, you're going to attach one side of the double-sided adhesive to your project, and then you're going to put the foil on top, pretty side up, of course, and once you lay it on there, you're going to burnish it either with your finger or any other kind of tool like I have here, press it in there really hard, and when you peel it away, you can see that the foil sticks to where you place the tape. I'm going to do that one more time so you guys can see the process. So you stick down your tape, peel away the backing, Place your foil on top of where you place your tape, burnish it in there really hard with a finger or your tool or a brayer, then peel away the excess and the foil will stick to where you place down your tape. This is one of the easiest and probably least expensive ways to add a foiling element to your project. Next up, we're going to use a glue pen to add foil. I have a glue pen here that I'm writing my sentiment out. You can write words, you can draw shapes. What's different about this glue pen is that when it dries, it'll dry clear and it will still remain a little bit sticky. So once it's uh, dry, you'll see that it's clear and then you lay your foil on top pretty side up and you'll burnish it the same way, either with a bone folder, your a brayer, or your hands. And once that's good and stuck on there, you'll see that it's a little bit raised. So that's when you peel up the remaining foil and you have foil sticking to where you place down the glue from your glue pen. Now I'm just going to go back and erase all the pencil marks. The next method is to use glue dots. Glue dots are a popular tool to use in scrapbooking and card making. And so what I'm doing is I'm using the glue dot roll and then I'm just kind of stamping my glue dots on there. You can't really peel glue dots off with your fingers because, or maybe I am incapable because it just ends up like sticking to my fingers. So that's why I'm using the stamping method. And I'm just going to go and stamp glue dots all around my project to create some polka dots. I found that the key to foiling with glue dots is that you want your glue dots to be as flat and as even as a surface as possible. That way when you lay down your foil over top, it's, um, it comes out nice and even, you know, and there's not some bumpy spots. And so once you burnish uh, your foil on there, you'll try to peel off the remaining foil. And these glue dots work extremely well because they're really sticky. And once I peel off the sheets, um, there are some spots that I miss. You can see like a few on the bottom there. And so what you do is just take the remaining foil that you pull, peeled off and just go over it and try to burnish um, that foil back on there. And if you have some adhesive sticking where you didn't want it to, you just go in with an adhesive eraser and clean that up. Another way to stretch your crafty supplies for foiling is to use metal dies and a double-sided adhesive sheet. Now this works similar to double-sided tape, however um, this way it comes in a large sheet and you could do some layered foiling as well. I'll show you how in just a minute. So I ran that through my manual die cutting machine and now I'm just peeling the backing away from my die cut, trying to be really careful because it's super delicate. and then. I'm going to attach one side of that die cut to my project. Now remember, I haven't peeled off the front side yet, and the front side is what we're going to attach our foil to. So we just like it just becomes a huge sticker, as you can see here. And once I've done that, I'm going to lay my foil over top, burnish it in there with whatever tools you think works best for you, peel away the excess foil, and what remains is the foil that's sticking to your die cut. And so what I'm going to do now is that I have those uh, negative pieces that I'm going to pop right back into my project and I'm going to attach um, different colors of foil to it. So this is a great way to add multiple colors of foil to your projects. And it's a great way to stretch the crafty supplies that you already have on hand. 
So once you peel away the backing, um, you're going to attach different colors of foil. So I'm going to attach this really pretty opal -y foil here. And I just want to reiterate that this uh, video is not sponsored at all by Decafoil or Thermoweb, although it should be. Hint, hint. Thermoweb. Give me a call. <laughs> anyway, moving on to the fifth method of adding foil. It's through rubber cement. And rubber cement also acts like an adhesive. It's a really gluey, sticky adhesive. So um, definitely lay down some kind of craft mat if you're going to use this technique. And what I found works best with using rubber cement is attach is uh, laying down a as even as a layer as possible and you want to lay it on thick um, that way the foil can really stick on there and so this is great to add like a foil accent to a sentiment or to create a background like I'm doing here and see uh, I can see there the rubber cement isn't 100% perfect it's great for like a distressed look but what I found is that you can go back over the spots you missed and just burnish some more foil on there and it should stick to, um, stick to the rubber cement. Another way to stretch your crafty supplies is with a stencil and spray adhesive. And for this, I highly recommend going outside to do this. So um, I went outside, laid down my stencil on top of my paper, and then sprayed the adhesive over it. And now I'm going to lay my foil over top and burnish it in there the same way I've been doing it with the other methods. And the foil will stick to the places where um, the adhesive went through the stencil. I found that this technique also works great with um, creating a distressed foil look. It's not 100%, but it still gives a really cool effect to your projects. And as you can see, I have some spots that I miss, and you can just go over it with the, the remaining foil and try to burnish the foil, on, um, some extra foil on there. Next up, we have sticky embossing powder. Now, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Um, this wasn't my favorite technique to use. Either um, I had different expectations or I just didn't do it right, which is most likely the case. So um, I inked some Versamark ink on my paper and then waited for it to dry. And so it was still tack tacky to the touch. And I laid my foil over top. But as you can see, the foil just didn't really stick to the sticky embossing powder when it was dry. Um, so I heated it up uh, again, hoping um, it'll melt more of the powder, put some more foil over top, and really just try to burnish that as hard as I could into my project. And then when I peeled up the foil, I mean, you could see that some of the foils uh, remained on there. Uh, and it's great for a distressed look, but it just wasn't... Um, as full coverage as I had hoped. Now we're going to get to the techniques that use my favorite way of foiling, which is using a laminator. First, I'm going to create a Word document with my sentiments, and then I'm going to print it out on my laser printer. That's a very highly important detail if you're gonna use this technique. Um, you definitely want to use a laser printer, not a inkjet printer. So um, once I've got that printed, I'm gonna create a sandwich. It is a piece of parchment paper with a piece of cardstock, then my project, then the foil over top, and then I'm gonna run that through my laminator. This is a really inexpensive laminator that I got off of Amazon and it works great for foiling. I just really love adding foiling to my projects. I feel like when you add foil to a card, it just it gives it that wow factor. You know what I mean? Like if you were to buy a regular card in a store, I mean, the price would be like $4.99. But then once you add some foil to it, like the price doubles. So I feel like that just make the foiling just makes it just that more special. And using a laser printer definitely provides really smooth results. I could even use a leftover for another project. For this next technique, we're going to keep our laminator out and use some transfer gel and a stencil. So I'm using my palette knife to scoop and scrape some transfer gel onto my project. I have a stencil over top and you want to get a nice smooth and even layer. You can scrape off the excess transfer gel and place it right back into the jar. And then once you've got your nice even layer on there, you're going to remove the stencil and either soak it in a tub of warm water, warm soapy water, or uh, run it underneath your sink because you don't want this to dry and ruin your stencil. 
once it's dry, it will dry clear, and that's when you know you can run it through your laminator. So I'm making the same laminating sandwich as before, parchment paper, cardstock as a shim, and then my project with a foil over top. And once that uh, runs through, you can see the dimension that the transfer gel adds to your foil project. Um, this, is a tr this is truly a wow factor when it comes to foiling. This next technique involves using some more of your crafty stash by using up some of your rubber stamps and embossing powders. So I'm going to ink up my stamp in some Versamark ink. I'm going to lay my project over top. I'm going to cover it with some um, embossing powder. And I'm going to heat set it with my heat tool. And then once it's, uh, once it's set, I'm going to uh, try placing um, my project in my laminating sandwich again and running it through a laminator. I notice I have some rippling, so I'm going to peel it off and see what my results are. And so the rippling did affect it a little, so I'm going to run it through my laminator again to see if it um, doesn't improve things. Once I pull out my project, I realize that um, I'm kind of underwhelmed by it. You know, it's, it's nice, you can see it's nice, but it's not wow. So I'm going to do what all millennials do and go online and see if there's any way I can fix this. So go to my YouTube channel, a shameless plug here, and search on ways of foiling and stambling. And naturally, one of the first videos is by Jennifer McGuire. So I'm looking at how she did it. I'm not going to spoil it for you. I'm actually just going to link uh, her video down below. And so I'm going to try her method of uh, stamping and foiling. And um, do this at your own risk, as she says in her video. And so once I try her technique, I mean, the results are like night and day. Like, look at how much foil is left on that project. It is, this is wow, okay? The other project was like, eh. I was like, oh, cool. This is like, oh, my God, that is so cool. So I tried again with some polka dots. And then I tried again with some snowfall. And then again, I tried it with some flowers. I can't stop. Someone stop me. Someone help me. I'm in a foiling craze right now. <laughs> Okay, time to turn off the laminator before I laminate every single piece of scrap paper in my house. Time to recap. So we have the double-sided adhesive. Then we have using a sticky glue pen to add foil. Next up, it's using some inexpensive glue dots. Then we use a die with some double-sided adhesive sheets and our manual die cutting machine to add multiple colors of foil. Then we use some rubber cement. And then we use some spray adhesive and a stencil. Next, we tried using some sticky embossing powder. If you have any tips for using this, please let me know down in the comments. I also tried it with a stamp and it didn't, it wasn't my favorite result. Now for the projects using a laminator, we first printed with a laser printer. You can also use toner sheets as well. Then we use some transfer gel, a stencil, and a laminator for some dimensional foil. This is a great card for summer. Then we use some embossing powder with a laminator, and this is where I went foil happy. Um, you know what? I'm not even ashamed. You add something shiny and something rainbow to my attention, and you'll have me hypnotized for days. Let me know down in the comments which of these techniques was your favorite, and be sure to subscribe to my channel and give this video a big thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Thanks!